Welcome to Malifo University. 603. Gaining Ground Strategy, Cloak and Dagger. Before you can play Cloak and Dagger, you'll need to make four strategy markers. These are on 30mm bases, but will not have height, so plain bases will work just fine. They will move frequently during the game, so make sure you can pick them up without problems. You also need to make intel tokens, maybe as many as five per player. You might use little plastic discs of your faction's colors, a set of dice, or even just small coins of your local currency. Of course, you can also keep track of tokens in the app, but it's often helpful to have a physical token to see. Easy printable strategy markers and tokens like these are available from the link to the Wargame Vault in the notes below. After the players choose their deployment zones, you'll take turns creating strategy markers on the center line. The defender places one first, and since they are created, they are not allowed to overlap impassable terrain. The attacker then creates a strategy marker on the center line, at least six inches away from the first one. Then the defender and attacker each again once more, with each new strategy marker at least six inches away from all the others. After the strategy markers are on the table, Deploy your models like normal. These strategy markers have no height, but are concealing, which affects non-melee attacks that draw line of sight through them. Models can see through concealing terrain, but if any sight lines pass through concealing terrain, then the target model is said to have concealment, which doesn't actually affect the target model. But when you target a model that has concealment with any ranged attack action, the action has a negative modifier. This applies specifically to non-melee attack actions, so tactical actions would not be affected by concealment. The goal of Cloak and Dagger is to gather intel tokens from the strategy markers or enemy models that have intel tokens. You'll discard them to score, so you have to keep gathering more each turn. When a friendly controlled model is within an inch of a strategy marker, it can target that marker and take the interact action to gain an intel token. The strategy markers have unlimited supplies of intel tokens, and you don't have to stack the tokens on the markers, just keep them beside the playing area. Once you get an intel token from a strategy marker, your opponent may then pick up that strategy marker and place it anywhere within 4 inches of where it was. It doesn't have to be entirely within that 4 inches, so it really could wind up nearly 5 inches away. Remember to measure before you pick it up and it's okay for the marker to wind up touching impassable terrain or other models when it is moved like this. Also, the opposing player does not have to move the marker, but will probably want to. Because a player may wind up tucking a strategy marker away behind terrain, you do not need line of sight to target a strategy marker with this interact action. Just be within an inch. The other regular rules of interact still apply, so a model that is engaged or is taking the disengage action usually cannot take the interact action. That's one way to get the intel tokens. The other is to steal them from enemy models who already have them. A friendly controlled model within an inch of and with line of sight to an enemy model with an intel token can target that enemy model for the interact action, ignoring the targeted model's engagement range for this specific interact action. If another model is engaging your model, you do not get to ignore that model's engagement range, just the one you're trying to steal the token from. If you do it, you get to take one of the intel tokens that model is carrying, but only one. Until the end phase of that turn, that targeted model is not allowed to take an intel token from your model that just stole it. This keeps them from just trading the tokens back and forth. The model that lost the token can steal from other models and can get tokens from strategy markers, just not from the model that stole one from him. Remember that summoned models don't count for friendly schemes or strategies and cannot take the interact action for the turn they are summoned, and in gaining grounds encounters can never interact with strategy markers as long as they still have their summon upgrades or tokens. While this means summoned models can never gain new intel tokens from the strategy markers, they could steal intel tokens from enemy models starting in the turn after they arrive, and they could be used at any time to engage enemy models to keep them from taking the interact action. I'll take a brief moment now to thank all those who were patrons at the time this video was made, especially Sergey, Keith, Alan, 
Jeremy, Tom, and Travis, and many more at the free student tier. Your support is essential to bringing these videos to life. At the end of each turn after the first, a crew may discard all the Intel tokens from any number of friendly models to gain one victory point. To gain the first point, you need to discard just one Intel token. To gain the second victory point, you'd have to discard two tokens, and so on. But mind the wording of the strategy. You discard all the tokens from any number of models. If you have three Intel tokens between two models and need to discard two tokens, you cannot take just one from the model carrying two. You discard all the tokens on a model or none of them. Let's see this in action. The Dreamer and Summer Teeth Jones are having a scrap with the Cloak and Dagger strategy. By the end of the first turn, they have both advanced across the board thus. In turn two, Capelius is within an inch of this strategy marker and takes the interact action. He gains an intel token, and the Bayou player gets to move the strategy marker four inches. He puts it over here next to this good old boy, who also interacts with it to gain an intel token of his own. The Neverborn player moves the strategy marker back in his direction. The Neverborn have a choice to make with the Carver. He could go to the same strategy marker and get an intel token, or he could do what the Carver does. Naturally, he charges the good old boy and uses his shears to make gumbo out of the gremlin. He could have taken the interact action to steal the token from the gremlin, but elected to kill him instead. This strategy does not have a provision for tokens going to another model when the bearer is killed, so the good old boy's token is simply lost, along with all his hopes and dreams. Let's say the end of the turn comes with no one else getting any more intel tokens. The Neverborn player discards all of the intel tokens from Capelius, which is only one, to score their first victory point. Let's jump forward to the final moments of turn five. The Neverborn have scored the strategy every turn and have three victory points. Currently, the Dreamer and Lord Chompybits both have one intel token, and the Carver has two, putting them in a position to score. The Bayou crew scored in turns three and four, and will need three intel tokens to score another victory point for the strategy. As it stands, Summer Chief Jones, a good old boy, and Georgie and Olaf each have one, so it looks like it'll be one point for each crew. That is, of course, until the Bayou player chooses Georgie and Olaf for the final activation of the game. They are already within an inch of the Carver, and no one else is engaging the Gremlin Enforcer, so they interact with the Carver to steal one of his intel tokens. With nothing else to do in the turn, the Neverborn crew does not have enough intel tokens to score the final victory point for the strategy. The Bayou crew must discard three tokens to score. They discard both from Georgie and Olaf, and the one from the good old boy, leaving one on Summer, not that it matters at the end of the game. They could not just take one from each gremlin, because you have to discard all of the tokens from each model you choose. That's the Gaining Ground strategy, Cloak and Dagger. Pick up a printable set of all the markers and tokens you need to play Malifaux in the Wargame Vault. If you haven't already, join us on Patreon to receive early ad-free access to all new content, and be sure to visit the Malifaux University gift shop for the latest in Malifaux-themed shirts, hoodies, drinkware, and more. Links are in the notes below. And remember, play friendly games, keep it simple, and have fun.